can go. So, hi, uh, I am Eshed, and instead of talking about my project, I'm going to talk about yours. Um, sorry for the clickbait uh, title, but in, in, in general, like, uh, okay, forget about your project. I don't want to talk about contributors and anything. I have a great new idea for a game. Get this. I want an MMO where you go around and you're like itching. You have these itches that you want to scratch. And, and you know, you, you find other players and, and you go around and they have their own itches. And you're like comparing itches. What itches to me? What itches to you? And like, it's cooperative. Maybe our itches are compatible and we can scratch them together. It's very, very friendly, very nice. It's something that I don't think any of you ever seen. And I need like developers and artists and designers, medical research, everything like, does anyone here want to help and become a contributor in my game? Sure. <laughs> okay, I saw like a finger or two, <laughs> kind of, which is a bit frustrating, so I'll have to go back to my original presentation. I, I wanted to, get to call the game Scratch That, or, well, but, but Scratch That. Um, why do we want contributors? Um, this is actually a question when I talked that I want, uh, I said that I want to talk about motivation. People said like, why? But is it really necessary that an open source project has more than one developer? So I asked myself like, if a developer releases the source code and no one reads it, is it still open source? A and you can approach it from one approach, which is like ethics. We think that source should be open. We want people to be able to change our code. It doesn't matter if they do it or not. It's about your ownership of applications that are on your computer. But I, I prefer another approach, like that open source is like love. Like you can do it on your own, but it's way better together. Um, and this made me think like of a thought experiment. Let's, let's do like GitHub Tinder. You know, people all the time, they said like, oh, I want to uh, you know, contribute to some open source project. I had it so many times. Uh, and then like, there's GitHub, and you could like swipe li left or swipe right, and there's like my radius of interest. I can check what languages I know, what things. This sounds really, really nice, but um, I don't think it will work. Like, open source is not exactly like finding a partner. The alternative for not finding a partner is being alone. People come to this. Uh, like, they really don't want to be alone. And the alternative for not being a contributor is watching cat videos, which is kind of nice. <laughs> so it's not really that um, someone um, wants to work about your project. It's like people are saying, I want to contribute to open source in general. And then this is kind of amorphic. It's not really anywhere near actually being a contributor. And for it to change there, like, you, you, you have to fight the cat videos. <coughs> so, itches. Um, Eric S. Raymond in the Cathedral and the Bazaar said that every good work of software starts by scratching a developer's personal itch. Now, I want to expand on it a bit, a bit because, like, even if you're a contributor, if you're, if you're not the first person who writes the first line of code, it's still, like, a good work of software that you're doing as part of a bigger work of software, so it should still be the itch. Like, the second contributor should have an itch that is compatible with the first contributor. Otherwise, they're going to watch cat videos instead. So, um, we need these people, these contributors, with the compatible itches and the skills to scratch them. And itch, whatever. Um, for this, we somehow have to reach them because uh, as I, there is no GitHub thing that they should come to the project and, you know, see what you do, figure that they have the itch that is compatible to you and start working, which brings me to trick number one. Make something that you already know it makes people itch. How do you do that? Clones and alternatives. If you think about all the talks today that we had so far, I actually checked it. Um, sorry, I wasn't in the virtual uh, and the augmented reality one, but all the ones, like, we had a talk about Godot, which is kind of an alternative for some other um, unnamed game engines. 
Uh, <laughs> we have lots of games that are like open X, like open A A AOE or open RA. Uh, we have FreeCiv, we have LibreOffice. It's like in general open source projects. So like we see this uh, a lot of times. We just saw like porting Doom, and before that people were talking about AI for StarCraft. Good, good, well, why, why? In open source, we keep seeing all these references, clones, and alternatives to regular software. And this is like because it gives you a shared vision. Like the people had this itch in the first place. I played a game. I had fun. Now, when someone tells me what his open source project is, he can say, like, I'm doing this. And I'm in my head, this was fun. I can do that, and I will have fun. Or I, I want to expand things, like the, the alternatives. Um, people um, have something in proprietary software that they don't like. They cannot change it. So they're looking for an open source alternative where they can. So uh, in Wikipedia, I did like a very new quick check. And it seems like uh, more than a third of the project on the list of open source games were remakes or clones and stuff like this. And, and this was not by passing every line, by just searching the word clone. Um, and there's like a huge site of OS games, game clones. Um, in general, it's a bit, you know, uh, impressive how much of the open source work is, is not really original in, in a way. Um, the problem is that it limits your options. Like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a creative person. I have my own ideas. Why, why do I have to make someone that somebody else made? I want to make my project, and I want to find contributors for it. This makes sense. And, and obviously, if you already started your project, it is a bit too late to decide that it is a remake of something else. Um, so this brings me to trick number two. Actively itch your future contributors. Like, if that itch didn't exist in the first place, let, let's try to itch them. Release your game, have people play it, gather an audience, and then when people play it, they're itching. Um, this, this is very nice. It's, it's a bit the same as we talked about before about proprietary game, that they like created the itch for us. This time, we create the itch for us. Um, if you're really, really like brave, just leave small imperfections that will annoy people so they want to <laughs> fix them. Um, I, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yet. yet. All, my, all the imperfections are not deliberate. They're just like part, part of the process. Um, it, it's very nice because if people actually play the game, and people will have more patience trying a game than reading what your new fancy project is about, because a game is more attractive than um, just you know, a, a blog post about, oh, this is going to be an amazing game. No one's seen it anywhere. Um, and, and you have a lot of control over the direction of the project as opposed uh, to alternatives and stuff. And especially because like, you made the first version. You, you really control where this thing is going. Um, it limits the scope. Like, you cannot do a really big game like this, because alone, you're not going to get to a playable version that will itch people just by, um, you know, uh, just by yourself. Um, and also, it can only be applied before development. So it didn't even help to what I wanted to solve, uh, which is a problem. We, we're still only talking about things that you can do before you start your project. OK, so let's see. Um, what about projects that already exist? Uh, yeah, be attractive. I know that we talked about dating and swiping and, and uh, wanting like that people notice us. So in this case, let's say I have a project, any kind of project. Show, don't tell. I, I, you, it's much better to um, put screenshots than text. It's much better to to do to give examples. Be nice. I know this sounds very weird, but there are communities um, that the developers are not very nice, and it doesn't seem like a very friendly place to be. Um, some of them manage to, you know, power through it, because many people really, really, really need um, to work with them, uh, and they're like a monopoly like Linux. But when you are a small contributor, and this is the way to be attractive, uh, then be nice. Um, 
and make scratching as effortless as possible. Let's say someone is insane and they want to contribute to your project. Um, there's a really nice metric that uh, Adam Kariv uh, did, uh, which is the time of onboarding, finding and fixing an issue end to end. Like, if you have a really, really weird uh, framework and you need like to start up VMs and make dependencies and I don't know what, people will just not have enough goodwill to remain until that works. They just want to fix something small. No one will ever come to your project, okay, no, no one, but usually people won't come to your project wanting to change it end to end. They will want to fix something small, make it easy for them to do this. Uh, this is also about like language. If you thought like, oh my God, I have an amazing project, let's do it in Haskell or anything like, I want to learn this fancy new language. Don't do that. Pick a language that people know that people, uh, people can uh, work with, like Czech, Godot, and uh, basically everything that was uh, said today were in languages that people use. Uh, Open RAF, for instance, is in C Sharp, and while it's not our favorite language, many people know it and they get loads of contributors. Uh, no, wait, this still doesn't help. I, I told you what languages to pick and everything, so you still have to think about all these things before you start your project. Um, so, so really, I think this is the moral here. If you pick the wrong project, no, nothing will help you. Like, y you can um, try, you can walk with what you have, um, but really, really, when it boils down to it, it's a lot of choices that you make in what the project is based on, where, you, where you're going, and how you're attractive to other people, this is what's going to make or break whether people itch about your project or not. Um, and wrong project is not about the game. Your game idea can be amazing, and it can be like really, really good, but it's just an unattractive project. It's, you cannot convey to anyone you talk to, that it is attractive in the uh, attention span they have before they switch to YouTube and the cat videos. Um, so, so really, this brings me to my last trick. Um, the best way and the only real way to double your contributors is find some project that has one contributor and join it, and then it has two contributors, and you've doubled the contributors. Um, and it's not a bad idea, be because there are really, really many of these projects around there. And one of them can be quite interesting. And by definition, um, it's, it's going to be an attractive project um, because you picked it. So you were attracted to it. And like relationships, you just find something that you, makes you happy. It doesn't have to be like the fantasy that you hold about like the perfect game. Um, and it doesn't have to be popular or anything. You just need to enjoy it yourself. Um, so the really cool thing about Trick Zero, you can always do it, even if you started the project, if, even if the project isn't started yet. Um, and it teaches you an important life lesson, which is just a bonus. Um, and it spreads the love, of course, because open source is love, and we want to do it together. Uh, I'm a lot quite biased. I must say, because I've joined an existing uh, project and I haven't worked on any of my own <laughs> very crazy ideas for the future that I really, really want to start and I would be happy to tell you all about them, but they're just like, I think that I spent my time quite well. And the project that I work on, and I didn't even talk about it, is called Spring. It's an RTS engine. And it started as a remake of Total Annihilation back in the day in 2005. Um, I've been a player before becoming a contributor. If, if you see, like, this, these are the exact tricks. Like, this is trick zero, this is trick one, this is trick, um, which one was? Uh, two. Um, and, and when I think of how I became, I really went through all these processes that I was talking about. Um, so you might say, Wait, this, this is just like you're trying to stifle my creativity. You're painting a very bleak picture of how open source is just uncreative and, and cannot compete in this manner with, um, uh, with proprietary software. So, so maybe I am. I, I do think that we are 
uh, in some ways disadvantaged. And if you do really want contributors, you have to work with what you have rather than hope for things that are better. I'm sorry if I disappointed here. Um, what is going on? Oh, yes, I have finished actually really fast. <laughs> nice. I thought, I thought um, no, it just really, really fast. Went fast. Anyway, so questions. <laughs> Yes. Um, <coughs> say some of the tricks I find it really hard to apply to real life, mm -hmm. especially trick number two. Yes. Because it involves first the release of the game, which is already like a hell of a journey. And the second one, which is even more like, hard, is to track the player. Which is, for me personally, is even harder than to release the game. Because releasing the game in the end is just a development. It takes a lot of time, but you can do this on your own. Yes, so, so the question was, um, how you, can you do this when even releasing your game is really, really hard on your own? And um, then, once, even once you released it, getting to players and getting them to play your game is going to be quite hard. So I think that in general, attracting uh, players will be simpler than attracting com contributors. Um, it, it's just like... Th look at every community. They usually have more players than contributors unless they're like entirely dead and they're not even trying to find players or I don't know what. Like it, it's in, in most communities or successful communities that I've seen, um, the majority of people are the players. So it, it's kind of, I understand that it is hard to find players, but it, this is like the lesser <laughs> problem that you get here. And now about releasing your game, you are right. This is kind of the problem. And, and it, it's just like if you pick uh, and you plan your scope uh, accordingly, you can do a beta that is fun and like shows promise. It doesn't have to be 100% playable, but it, it should show uh, and give this, you know, itching that somebody wants to like, I, I want to see how, how, we, how it will be when it is done. Okay?